Hi, everyone. It's Don at with Embroidery.com. How is everyone's Thursday night going? Yes, I had to look at the calendar to um, make sure I said the right day. I mean, you would think I'd have it down by now that I would know it's Thursday, but hey, you never know. Hey, Barbara, welcome, welcome, welcome. How's it going? I hope it's going very well. Let's refresh this. Hey, Marilyn. Hey, Beth. Hey, Ivy. Hey, Dorothy. There we are. There we are. Hey, Melissa. Hey, Gary. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I got into my phone. Let's get out of my phone. Hi. How's everybody's day going? Tomorrow is World Embroidery Day. Really? Did you know my birthday is World Cross Stitch Day? That's kind of funny, right? Hi, Yummy. Um, or it's like, it could be like the second Tuesday of August, but I don't know when, but it's been on my birthday, which totally makes sense. Hey, Barbara. Hey, Julie. Okay, so I asked you guys earlier in the week what you wanted me to talk about, and there were great suggestions, but I started with um, finishing options. I should have grabbed another pattern. Do I have one around? I don't have that one. That's not exactly what I was looking for. It's fine. I have a bunch of pictures I want to go over. Every day, <laughs> every day is World Cross Stitch Day. Amen, sister. Yes. No stitching for you tonight. That's okay. We all have those days more than others. This year, World Cross Day is the 8th. My birthday is the 9th. I'm thinking about doing a sale of some kind for my birthday. Like seeing if I can't get a coupon and then giving you guys the code for the coupon for my birthday. I haven't talked to Darren about it yet, but it's kind of what I'm thinking. You have a really bad headache. Okay. So on your hand, if you go right here, it's on this middle knuckle right here. So your birdie finger knuckle and you go right here. I usually will hold on to my birdie finger and there's this bump. You can feel it. It's in, it's, it's like part of the knuckle, part of the joint, but there's this bump. And if you rub that bump, it hurts so bad. Be prepared to cry. Um, you will probably get like a flush, feel hot, and you'll probably even feel nauseous, but you rub it until you kind of feel this pop. It's hard to explain, but you can do it on both hands. Um, and if it's usually if I have a migraine or a headache, if it's externally caused, like you hit your head or something, obviously it won't work. Um, but it's this little, it's this bump right here in the joint and you rub it in circles until you feel this pop. And it's not like a pop pop. It's like a metaphysical pop. I don't know how to else to explain it, but it is, it is life changing on headaches. And then of course, you know, this one where you push here, that releases natural endorphins. And then there's two on your eyes. There's one here and then one right when you, when you trace your eyebrow, there's a dent in your eye, in your bone and you can rub that one too. Anyway. Okay. Your puppy butt it has with you. No rubbing will do anything. <laughs> no rubbing your knuckles would do anything for a puppy bump headache. <laughs> oh, you did? Oh, I know. Thank goodness for, for migraine medicine. Yeah, yeah. I totally, yeah. My migraines were super, super bad after I had my second kid. And so most of my twenties and all of my thirties, um, 
my big thing with migraines, but they've tapered off and now it's my fibro that's bad. But anyway, those are my tips and coffee. Diet, oh, and wrapping a warm towel around your head. Warm towel around your head will always help. And laying on ice. Ice always helps me. I lay on ice all day long. So, um, and I actually read one time that if you soak your feet in coffee, it'll help. I've used warm water and it helps. Well, actually, I've soaked my feet in hot water and had an ice pack on the back of my neck while I did it. That's helped. Warm towel around your head. This is not a migraine channel. This is a cross stitch channel. So <laughs> maybe it's a lifestyle channel. I, I need to start talking about other things. Okay. So I asked what you guys wanted to talk about. And where is the post that I posted? Oh, and we have to talk about the funny one because that was super, super funny. Oh, I don't know where it went. Um, so I asked you guys what, um, what weird things were in your sewing boxes or, you know, near your stitching area. Okay. I don't know where it went. Okay. I'll have to find it later. Anyway, you guys have some great ideas of what I should talk about tonight. I'm going to talk about finishing options. Okay. But, um, so I, so I did the post about what is uh, a weird thing in your um, stitching box, okay? So let's see. Okay, so I had um, foot masks in my sewing basket. I looked though, I had some other weird things. I had a one hole punch, I had a hole punch. Um, I had money, I have, I have change. I don't know why, but it always seems like I have change. And then like other non weird things like marker. I mean, you know, you always need a marker. So those aren't weird things. Okay. So here are some of the responses, which are hilarious. Melissa didn't have anything. She's like, it's weird that I don't have anything weird. I'm like, it is weird. Um, Jamie, I hope I'm saying that right. Had band-aids, Andrea nail polish, Angela, eye drops and tissues, which is brilliant because your eyes hurt. Jan, <laughs> she had a grapefruit spoon. That kind of cracks me up. Ivy had a jar of Vaseline, which kind of, I mean, you could totally maybe use that as a stitching supply. I mean, it'd be weird. It'd be weird. But maybe. Fishing line. Fishing line I don't think is weird. Because some people use fishing line to attach their beads. So fishing line I don't think is weird. Um, that's from Allison. Sharon said nothing weird, just a lot of cat hair. <laughs> that's specialty fiber. You have your engagement ring in your project box. That's funny. You have liquid band-aids. Hey, you know what? Uh, this one I liked. Erin said she had a spare squeaky toy for her dog's um, toys when she has to do surgery on them. It's for dry lips. <laughs> Your Vaseline's for dry lips. Good, 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 good. Uh, Linda didn't have anything. Cheryl, I don't think it's weird, but I have a screwdriver to tighten the lap stand after I have flipped it over, which I don't think is weird either. Now, Here's the weird part when it comes to screwdrivers is if you have more than four of them in your uh, sewing box, which I might have <laughs> in each sewing box. And I have a lot. How many sewing boxes active? Active. How many sewing boxes do I currently have? I have one. I have two in my bedroom. I have one in the living room. I took the one out of the family room. So currently I only have three. And I have at least, at the minimum, three screwdrivers in each one. It's a thing. A large can of Crisco? What? <laughs> Kathy has a large can of Crisco. Okay, I need a story on that one because that's funny. That's super funny. 
large can of Crisco. That cracks me up. Okay, so let me show you what I um, found. <coughs> so what I did is I went through, I went through my uh, finish gallery and um, grabbed some screen grabs on some of the um, projects that have been finished that have different options for framing. So I wanted to go over those. Try to refresh that post with your question. Took a picture a few minutes. Oh, you did? You took you took a picture? Okay, let me go see. <laughs> ah! <laughs> it's made out of clay and it holds um holding my black table <laughs> and stitching project made by my then eight-year-old daughter a couple years ago how cute is that that's adorable ping pong balls that's kind of brilliant take up the space in the drawer that's kind of brilliant. <laughs> I like it. Cute little ping pong balls. Did I miss any others? A large can of Crisco. Hershey snacks and ping pong balls. Oh my gosh, that cracks me up. That makes me laugh. Okay, so these this pattern, um, I stitched this one. This was um, Daughter's by Mary Billy, it's Dressmaker's Daughter. And it's supposed to be all stitched in one, but of course I stitched it separately. And this was a self frame, which I should have grabbed, but I didn't. Um, so I bought these pre-made pre uh, frames at Michael's and then I just self framed them. So there's um, two types of foam board out there. There's one that's sticky and then there's one that isn't. I've used both. Okay, you use the one that's sticky and you will never, ever, ever get it off. You're stitching off of it. Um, and it can, the glue will discolor, discolor the fabric. These I stitchy pinned. I wish I had a piece of foam board. So the foam board, you know, has a space between it. And you get flat head pins, put it on, you can pin it and stitch it and, and stretch it as you go. And then on this one, um, I uh, just taped my fabric on the back and then put the back of the frame over it. So um, these were just self-framed. Um, and I've done several this way. Now, um, I know Michaels did. I don't know if Hobby Lobby did because I've never taken anything to them. But Michaels, if you took in a frame and took in your piece, they would stitchy pin it for you. And it wasn't that much money. And they would, you know, you could even cut a mat. They could even cut a mat if they had it in stock, you know. So, um, and it's a much cheaper option. And they'll also do that for, you know, pre-made frames that they have. Now, my other framer that I love um, here in the Valley, his name is Frank Prince at Prince Gallery here in the Valley. He'll do that too. You can take it into him and he will stretch it and put it in the frame that you bring. I even think, uh, I think Melinda took him a frame once that was too big for her project and he cut it down for her. He cut it down to fix her project, to fit her project. So when you're looking at a frame or whatever, or you're looking at framing something, think kind of outside the box. You know, I get tons of frames at antique stores. I've got a closet full of frames um, because I love frames and you're always going to need them. Um, so you can always, always have the option of taking something into a professional framer if you have a frame in mind and they'll stretch it for you and, and, and mount it in the frame, put a mat on it, whatever you want. And then you've, you know, cut the cost of framing down because you got the frame somewhere else. Um, this was a professional frame. This was done by um, uh, Frank as well. 
And again, it was the double matting, which I love, love, love. This is a really, really cloudy picture, but I think it's really beautiful. Okay, this again was a pre-made frame. Um, I think this one, if I recall correctly, um, they she did have um, Michael's um, stitchy pin this for you. I took one piece to get framed at Hobby Lobby, never again. They didn't mount it tight enough. I am going to have to get redone at my usual frame shop. Um, okay, I'm biting my lips. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever noticed when you don't want to say something, you sincerely, actually, actively bite your lips or you bite your tongue when you don't want to say something? I just saw how small that picture was, so I'll make it bigger. Um, I've never went to them. Um, I, I The one experience I had with them, I saw that they had a mat that I wanted cut it, cut down. I didn't want them to do anything except cut this mat. I knew exactly what size I wanted, everything. And it took them 20 minutes to get somebody there. And then I don't know if he knew what he was doing. Now, beyond that personal experience, I've had people come into the store and are like, this is what I just picked up. And I was like, you take it back and you get your money back because they've had that same experience. It is super important, especially when you're work, when you go to a big box store that, I mean, a lot of times like, like with, okay, so I had a, I, one of my local stitchers here, Misty, she was the professional framer at Michael's, right? So like one of the big things was, you know, she would encourage people to walk up and go, okay, who do you frame? Who do you? Who, who frames your cross stitch stuff? Does she cross stitch? I mean, those would be my first two questions. Is the person that's framing this, going, do, do they do needlework? And you know, how much needlework have they done? Those would be my two biggest things. Um, you don't ever want the framer that you take it to, to use glue, like I said. Um, one of my other customers, she took one into a framing place here in the Valley that does do glue. It was her first piece on linen. It was um, like a 1987, um, I think Cross Stitch Magazine or one of the magazines. I don't know if it was Country Cross Stitch, one of the magazines. They used to do these commodity uh, plates, um, <coughs> these um, holiday plates, and they'd have one every year. She took it into them. They cut it about a half an inch from the stitching and they glued it to the mat. And I mean, obviously she was devastated. So you want to, how much experience do you have with needlework? Do you glue your stuff? Do you stitchy pin it or do you, um, or do you tape it? You know, what are, what are all the things? Does the person that's going to be framing this do needlework? All those things, because you, you don't want to, at least here's the thing with Hobby Lobby. I mean, with, with Beth's experience, at least it was, not stretched tight enough. At least they didn't glue it because with her, she got back this piece that had been cut to an inch of its life glued down. And now she had no options, none whatsoever. Um, because it was circular, you know, so she couldn't even frame it square because they had cut it circular. <clears throat> I also got a suede. My eyes are bugging out today. I also got a suede mat that they wouldn't give me the remaining piece that was cut out like my usual framer would. Told them I paid for that entire mat. Why shouldn't I get to keep the extra piece? <coughs> it's true. Why shouldn't you? I love suede mats. Oh, suede mats and linen mats are my. Mm. I love them. Love, 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 love them. So those are a couple things to definitely check when you take stuff to the framer. Whether you're you're whether you're getting them just stitchy pinning it and matting it and mounting it, you know, whatever you're getting them done. If you're having the whole piece custom done, whatever it is, you still need to make sure <coughs> sorry that they're going to do the piece the right way. Okay, let's see. Come on. Where's the Oh, do I have to go back down or something? 
Okay, do I need to get out? Okay, this was another piece. This one I included because I wanted to show. So normally these would have been framed separately. Um, <coughs> I get weird hiccups when I cough. See, and that's the other thing. You can't judge all the Michaels and all the all the Hobby Lobbies by one because, because you get a really good framer into a Hobby Lobby or a Michaels, and then you have an amazing framer. That's how Misty was. Misty was great, you know? So <coughs> I get these weird hiccups that I cough and I hiccup. Just ignore me. So... You haven't taken it apart to see. Ugh. Your Hobby Lobby's been great. I can tell when looking at, at it at an angle that it's not right. There are small areas that pop up. How do you find a good framer? Yeah, talking to the framer first is really, really important. Um, uh, you know, asking around is good. Um, most of the times... Um, when I've been to framers, they'll have a gallery and they will, you know, have their work showcased, obviously. Um, the framer um, that I like here in the Valley, he always has a cross stitch piece there. And so I can definitely see that it, that he does cross stitch. You know, I took my first piece to him. Oh, well, how I found him was I asked a needlework store. But I, I mean, this was my very, very first piece I ever had professionally framed you know, a good 30 plus years ago. <clears throat> and, um, I asked the, I asked the needlework store, like, where do I go? And so they recommended him to me. Um, and I remember it cost me a hundred dollars. My husband was so mad, which a hundred dollars now I'm just like, dang, I got a good deal. Um, and it was a suede mat and I loved it. I got first place at the fair. But again, um, you know, you have to ask the things. Yeah. See, I mean, Michael's here was awesome and it was all because of Misty, you know, now had Misty went to Hobby Lobby, then Hobby Lobby would be fabulous, you know? So you really have to pick and choose your framer of what to do. But this was an option of, instead of framing them separately, she framed them all together. And I think it turned out great. I think it turned out awesome. Even though you've got all the different fabrics in there, I think, I don't know, I really like it. I think it turned out great. Okay, this is that thing I was telling you about. This is one uh, Carrie did. And so what it is is she's got a, a really stiff cardboard that she wraps the piece around and then either tapes it, I, I think she tapes it, and then makes a fabric ruffle and then has another piece of cardboard on the back and she sandwiches the ruffle in between. And then, of course, she's got the ribbon um, that she can hang it from. So um, these are super, super fun and super cute, too. And you can do this with, like, any size. I mean, this is, this one's probably, like, that big, you know. So it's a nice um, it's a nice diversion. Now, you don't have to use a ruffle. You can use ribbon. I mean, there's so many, there's so many options when doing something like this. Um, which I do have more examples of, of course, the, um, the, uh, wooden hoop. Now I think there are two different ways you can do the wooden hoop. You can do it like this with nothing behind it. There's nothing behind it. So if you flipped it over, you'd be able to see the back or you can put some batting in, you know, in this empty space of the hoop and then put felt over it. And either sew the felt down or glue it down so then the back is finished. So there's two ways you can do that. Um, this was one of those little boxes we talked about. This piece, I just, again, it's a jewelry box. I don't have it. Oh, I think it's upstairs. Um, and I just, I cut it to size and I just placed it in there. So it's not glued in or anything. It was just literally placed in the box. Um, okay, this is a crappy picture, but it's okay because I have the real thing right here. So let me get out of that. Okay, so there's this one. So um, am I upside down? No, okay. So these are <coughs> freestanding hardinger. 
I'm checking my time. So these are freestanding heart anchors. So they would be like this. Um, so, you know, they could be like that. But what she's done is she um, took and put a red mat behind it. And then she put another mat behind it. And <clears throat> you know what? I don't think that's a mat. It's tape. That red is tape. It's red tape. <laughs> yeah, it's red tape. And then the Hardinger, so the tape, so it's double sided tape, and the Hardinger is just sticking to the tape. So that's a total option. And then the, and then the, um, the mat just has a, um, well, it has a piece of Velcro and obviously the Velcro fall up, but it has a 3M sticky thing, which is then attached to the wreath. So <clears throat> that's always a fun option. Can you stitch your, can you stretch your stitching, stitching over a canvas that has a wooden frame? Um... I know what you're talking about. I bet you could. How would you attach it to the wooden frame though? It would depend on, it would depend on the count of the fabric because I think the only way you'd be able to attach it to the canvas would be to staple it because obviously pins aren't going to go into the wood. Um, Yeah, yeah, like you would, like, let's say this is the canvas. This is the canvas, and this is, this is the canvas. This is your stitching. <clears throat> so you would take it and then staple it to the wood. Um, I don't know, are we, I don't think we're talking about stretcher bars. We're talking about canvases. We're talking about like canvases, like the, like the, the people oil paint on, right? <coughs> oh, like stretcher bars for like needlepoint and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. You could. Yeah. I've never done it. I've never done it. Yeah. If you got enough material to wrap around, absolutely. You could do it. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Okay, this is another one of the ruffle finishes, which is super, super cute. Okay, this one, again, this frame was a pre-made frame at um, Michael's, but look how cute the buttons are. How cute are the buttons? <coughs> Don't they make it? They like totally, I mean, can you imagine it? Just white. The buttons, the added buttons are just adorable. I can't recall, I think it was like Carrie's or Holly's or Julie's. I can't recall. I can't recall if you glued them down with hot glue or if you used that like E6000 stuff. I don't remember. But I think the addition of the buttons to the frame is like fabulous. Um, this is a pillow. Okay. Normally you would <coughs> sew the piece into the pillow. So you'd have, you wouldn't have seams. So the pillow was already made. And then my daughter was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to fray this. And so she did the cross stitching around it. So you can see that she went around it and then frayed the rest of the fabric, um, to it. You hot glued the buttons to the frame. See, they turn are cute. So this is just a little different spin on a pillow where she attached it to the top of the pillow, not, <coughs> not making it part of the pillow. Oh, I think it is a thing that I have to make it go all the way down or else I can't see the arrow. Okay, of course, we know quilts. Quilts are always an option.
I could never do a quilt because I don't sew. <laughs> this is an ornament. Again, she did a fun little back stitch and then she frayed it. I believe there's wool backing on this one. So I don't, I think the, the back stitching is what attached the wool to it. And then I think she went over the two top stitches where the ribbon is like twice um, to get the ribbon to stay. No, uh-uh, nope, no free tech. Nope, just the stitching. I have the Santa. Oh, I don't know where the Santa is. I'll have to find the Santa. But I did the same thing when I did my Santa. I just I just crossed, I just X stitched the border <coughs> and let it fray. And it was totally fine. I didn't do any fray check or anything. Another one, this one was sewn though. So this one was folded over. This one, so the edges were folded over and sewn. And then she did um do a border, cross stitch border around it with the wool on the back and then just frayed the bottom. And again, made room for the bell pull with a little pocket. So this one, the sides were sewn um, and it was closed with a sewing machine. <coughs> and then she just did the cross stitch around and then frayed the bottom, which I think turned out very cute. Oh. Stockings. Stockings are fun. Stockings are fun. This does take a little bit. I mean, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to add that. Um, this would be more like a sewer <laughs> that did this. Um, because you can tell it's lined, the, the stockings line. These stockings are only like this big. They're not, they're not full, full stockings. Okay, this one was, again, just a um, cardboard, and then she put some batting on it, wrapped it, added some ribbon and beads. You can see the beads. How cute are the beads? So every, she bead, 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 and then it has the backing on the back. Um, it's probably got, there's probably <coughs> two pieces of cardboard that were glued together um, to make it, but. I think that just turned out adorable. So these are definitely options for finishing <coughs> our um, gift exchange. This is a quilt block, an August quilt block. Again, you'd have to know how to sew. Um, this again was, I can I turn it? No, I can't turn it. Um, in the, just in the hoop thing, in the wooden hoop thing, which I mean, it's so freaking adorable, right? I love this one. Look how cute. This one again was all sewn. So, but it does have the bell pull at the top and the bottom, which I think is super cute. I think that's really, really fun, but it was all sewn together. Um, but I love how she used the same blue in the fabric. <clears throat> this one was a professional framing, double mat, a linen mat, um, but I think it turned out amazing. Um, okay, let me hurry and finish so I can, um, okay, again, this was just a bell pole. Cute little ornament, a, a pillow ornament, a pillow ornament, no less. So, um, put them together, made a pillow, uh, scissor phobes. These were probably hand stitched together. <clears throat> Most scissor phobes do call for hand stitching together. Anyway, the ones I've done, I've always hand stitched them together. <clears throat> I did this one scissor phobe where I didn't have any batting and I didn't know what to do, but I had some yarn. So I just stuffed it full of yarn. <laughs> you don't know. I didn't have any batting. So I stuffed it full of yarn. Um, let's see. What else do I have? Oh, this is another one where normally these would have been individual. And she did them all together. Which, again, I just think turned out amazing. Quilt. This is a quilt. This one was a... 
a wasn't a round robin of sorts. Each of us stitched a square <coughs> and gave it to, it was for a birth for one of our um, local ladies. And so each, uh, each one of the stitchers stitched a square and then Carrie made a quilt out of it, which I think turned out adorable. Okay. This is a gingerbread Halloween house from Victoria Sal Sampler. And I love this. This took Sarah and I three or four hours to put together. Um, and you, it, it was, was a, it was a little complicated. You got to make sure you get the right dimension of, um, <coughs> the right dimension of foam core. You have to have lots of stitchy pins and, um, what glue did we use? Oh shoot. I don't recall what glue we used, but we went through a couple of options when we were doing this because some of the glue works and some of the glue doesn't. Um, these parts right here, all the seams are hand stitched. We did use a different stitch than they, than they call for because what they were calling for wasn't working. I don't recall the stitch we used. <coughs> I think it was a hard anger stitch. It, I, we just found out it worked better. But um, this is totally 3D. It's got all the sides. It's very, very cute. And it was, it was, it was a lot of fun to put together. But it, it took us three or four hours. Or five. I don't know. <laughs> um, this one was a Halloween banner. Now, what she did on this one is she did a buttonhole stitch on the edge, just like you would for a Hardinger piece that you would cut out. So just like this one here, she did a buttonhole stitch or what is another term for it? A blanket stitch. Some people call it a blanket stitch. So this stitch, you're able to cut the fabric away. So she did that here and was able to <coughs> make this a freestanding piece with the cute little um, bell pull at the top. Um, okay, let's see what else. This one, just because dragons are cute and I had to show it off. Um, <coughs> this is Misty's piece. Misty was the framer at Michael's. So she got to be, you know, super creative when doing her pieces. Um, I think there's, yeah, there's three mats on here. This one's got a, you know, edge to it. Um, so <coughs> she got to do super fun things <laughs> to her pieces. Um, because she can, you know, because she can. Um, little bags. These bags are fun. They're like a 10 count. Um, so something like this would be super, super cute. You know, you could fill it full of candy or whatever um, or stuff it. I would stuff it so then I could use it every year um, as part of my Christmas decor. Scissor phobes. Again, that one is so teeny. Oh, see, look how cute, cute little miniature, little miniature um, scissor phobe. Okay, <clears throat> this is um, part of our feature and fabric boards, okay? So what they are, let me get out of this. Oh, I need to quit talking. Okay, so we have these boards. They're a surf, they're a foam of some kind, okay? And they're like that thick. So on the top, they have this, I don't know, white thing that goes over the top of it. Where you're able to um, grid out with like graphite paper your pattern. And then you take a, <coughs> a knife, like a sharp knife, and you'll score that paper. And then you take your fabric with like a butter knife and you literally just push it in to these places so this is all scrap fabric you literally just push it in and then you'll cut it off you know grab some like these kinds of scissors and you could just literally cut the extra fabric off and then you poke down whatever else is sticking out and you can use these and they're super lightweight you can put whatever you want on them to hang them i usually will hang these on the wall with the 3m hooks because they're a lot lightweight um, the only downside of these, but it's nothing, it's not any different than a bell pull, is that the stitching is out there and they can get dirty. 
but is no different than a bell pole. So that's what he is, which I love him. Bookmarks, bookmarks you can always do and you can always leave them as they are or you can put something on the back of them. Um, I think either's fine. Um, we all know and love bread, uh, bread cloth towels, bread, bread sack towels, because, you know, everybody has some. Or everybody's grandma used to do it. You know, something like that. Um, this one's fun. This one <coughs> is a key holder. You can see the hooks right there. And this is for a picture. You're supposed to put a picture there. So instead of a picture, they put stitching. So when you hold your keys or whatever you hold there, you've got stitching instead of a picture, which I think is super cute. Magnets. These are like the um, the mill hill ones. So you can just add a magnet to the back of it, and now you have a magnet for your fridge, which I think are super, super cute. Okay, one more, and then um, we'll go and see what you guys have been doing. Oh, oops. I clicked. Oh, these. These are so much fun. So you can get these blocks, these foam blocks, at any craft store. This one, um, I think we used um, this. Um, we've done one where it's just this, or we did it because we wanted it thicker. We did two of these. And we glued them together. Um, and then we did, I mean, we just wrapped the stitching around it, <coughs> taped it or glued it down and then took the ribbon and went around the board. But these blocks are so much fun because you can place them wherever you want. Um, I've seen, um, uh, nativity scenes where they've done this, where, you know, like Mary and Joseph and the baby are in on one block and some wise men are on another block and sheep are on another block and you can move them around. So I've seen these and these are so much fun to do because they're simple, they're simple. And then of course you've got the double stuffed um, chicks, but a lot of Mill Hill kits will be like this where they're double stuffed. And again, there's just batting in there um, and then you just um, stitch it together. Okay. So did I have anything else that it was really cute that I needed to go through real fast? Um, oh, these ones are fun. These ones um, are, they're a stand. So you have two and then you attach them at the top here. You sew them together at the top there. Um, and then of course these needle rolls or a pin cushion. Um, these are, you will hand stitch it together, you'll stuff it, and then you'll just tie the bow. Um, but these are super fun. Oh, I did want to show the, oh, I don't have them here. Oh, see, so look at this one. Look how cute this one is. It's the, um, thing, but she added pom-poms around it. See, cute, 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 right? Okay, we'll be done with that. Let's go see what y'all have been working on. I'm gonna refresh to make sure I have anybody. Ooh, let's see what else. What is that? I don't know what, are these bobbins? No, they're umbrellas. They're umbrellas. <laughs> they're little umbrellas. That's funny. Oh my gosh, look, your little game controller is almost done. How cute is that? That makes me laugh. How big is it? Like, is it small or is it like big? Like, is it like the actual size of the controller or is it bigger? That's freaking adorable. Sunny, hands on design, a year of celebration. Hey, you know, it is good to get that done first because then every time you look at it, you're just like, I need to be sunny. I have to be sunny to stitch on this. So it just automatically puts you in a good mood. I have to be sunny. Oh, look at the cute house. This is October, right? I'm thinking this is October because I know she finished September. It could be November. 
because October, you would think there'd be more pumpkins. I mean, I granted she doesn't got this down here done. So it could be October. Oh no, it's September. If I just read, read up there where it says September. Very cute. Hey, look, we can see the mousy man. Tim, Tim, Timothy or something like that. <gasps> look at the cute little mousy man. Hey, look at the fox. <gasps> the fox is all done. Oh, he looks so cute. His ear is all done. Adorableness. Oh, luncheon on the boat. Luncheon of the boating party. Oh, dude, look, you guys, face done. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Once Upon a Fairy Tale by Amy Stewart. Wait, I thought you were where they were doing, you were doing like the lights. But this is like a, wait, no, yeah, it's a horse. I'm like, that's like a horse. But then I was like, wait, I can't see it. Yeah, that's the horse. This must be where the lighting is coming from. <gasps> that's looking so good. Look, yay. Some of our local ladies were able to go and stitch today. Yay, that makes me so happy. That makes me so happy. I posted the info in our um, Cash Valley Stitchers group. So if, um, so, you know, I did that a while ago. I um, made that group a while ago. So maybe that's a great idea for you guys. Like if you have, like if you're in a valley or I don't know, wherever, county or whatever, maybe you make a cross stitch group in your, out, in your valley and you invite any known people to it. And then maybe even post on your, your own page. Hey, I made a cross stitch group, Facebook group, you know, and then maybe that could start a actual physical group. You know, if you got enough people to join local people that are in your County or in your area that could join your Facebook group, then maybe at some point you could be able to have a physical group. That's a great idea. You should try that. Um, and then feel free to post that you posted that. Feel free to, to that you made it and you're in what book county and whatever. Um, I, I do have a thing. Okay. Okay. I'm going to jump topics. I am because I have a thing. So I need to get to this too. We might end up going over all because I can't stop talking. Hand and Rudy stitch groups. Okay. So here's the thing. If you create a sit and stitch group in your area, you can sign up to have a stitch group. Okay. Then I have all, I have all the info here. So what can happen is when they place, so let's say you, you have to have like four more members or I don't know, what are the rules? I think there's four more members. So you have to four more members, you have to meet at least once a month, and you have to have an assigned leader. But what you will get when you create that group is you'll get free shipping on all your orders. You'll get special sales and discounts and educational content, but I don't have any yet, um, and all that kind of stuff. So go look here. So if you can find a group, if you can make a group, and um, yes, I want you to post them every week. Yes. 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 I would like you to post them every week. So if you make a group, you can get free shipping on whoever's in the group's orders. So what had happened is all the orders would go to the leader and then out the group, the weekly group or whatever, or she could even call you and say, Hey, I got the order and you could go and get it or whatever. But that's one great way of getting free shipping. Now back to our regularly scheduled program. The umbrella is a needle holder from England. The hoop was my grandmother's. <gasps> That's amazing. The, the um, I'm going to have to go back and look at that. The umbrella is a needle holder. Like does the, does the <coughs> bottom come off or the top come off? That's so cool. 
the only sewing thing of my grandmother's. Oh, well, no, I have two things. I have her, I have two of her um, sewing tables and I have her sewing basket. Oh, and I have the very first sewing machine she ever purchased by herself. I lost the, the cord that goes to it. So it's just a sewing machine. Anyway, what is this? A bit more done. Oh, I think this is the, the 12 days. Cause see, it says five. Maybe that's a five. Geese Elaine. I'm assuming it's 12 days of Christmas. That is so cool. An umbrella needle holder. I think the coolest needle holder I have is one made out of, um, I thought it was right there, but I don't see it. Oh, wait. Oh, no, that's oil. <laughs> I don't think you need it also fit in that. That's oil. I do have this cool thing, but it's not sewing related. It's, oh, I bet I could fit. Oh, brilliant idea. So. It's just this cute little thing and then it has a mirror, but this was supposed to hold lipstick. I bet it could hold needles. I could just shove some like cotton or something down in the end of it. I just made myself a new needle holder and this was my grandma's. Brilliant idea. I'm very excited about it now. Okay. Oh, look. Oh, you got the dude in the green car. Yay. That is awesome. That's looking so good. You're like done to that page. So now you've got the next, I don't know, two pages left or one page left. I don't know. I can't recall what you said. Oh my gosh. Look how pretty. Oh, look how pretty. Oh, I love it. That's going to be a fun stitch. That's going to be a super fun stitch. I was going to say it's gonna, either going to be super fun or super monotonous, but I think it's going to be fun. So that's what I'm saying. Ooh, more flowers for a bee. Mm. This seems to be getting really close to being done, right? Like, I'm not sure how much else there could be. I mean, I don't know what the finished pattern's supposed to look like, but I think it could be really close. Yes, the live is tonight. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <gasps> Cute Hufflepuff. 800 stitches today. Yay! It's bigger than you thought. Cunning cross stitch. S-Y-O-A stitch along letter um from hogwarts i love it i love it oh my gosh mary framer just messaged me and let me know that the last three projects have been framed and will be mailed this evening <gasps> oh stunning i love that you chose a green mat and i love the double matting the green just brings out the green in the piece i love it oh that's cute I have her embroidery thread, America Thread Company and coats when they cost 10 cents. Oh my gosh. You want to kind of keep it in the packaging and like never use it, right? Oh my gosh. That's so cute. Oh, how sweet. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, that's so cute. Very nice. Holy crap, girl. You are so fast. I need to know how, how, I mean, you stitch more than a half hour a day, right? Okay. That is our next thing that we're going to talk about next week. We are going to talk about, you're going to keep track. And each of you are going to keep track of exactly how many hours a day you're stitching for the next week. And it can be just whatever you want. You stitch eight hours a day. 
That's amazing. No wonder you get shit done. Holy crap. That's amazing. I love it. Okay, but I want to know for everybody. So everybody, this week you have to keep track of exactly how much time you're spending stitching. And this is a freaking adorable piece. Ha! How cute is that? Cute little cross stitch cupcake. I love it. Oh, look at the Jesus is coming along so nicely. Have not missed any days yet. Yay! And then this is a black or piece. Oh, it looks like there might have been some frogging going on. Stupid frog. <coughs> and then, oh, look, that's cute. This must be a hand quilted piece. Cute, cute. Oh, the cute little dragon stocking. Oh, that's coming along nicely. Look at all that confetti. Ugh. Oh, look at the cute little gnome. How cute is he? That's adorableness. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's looking so good. Oh, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Wait, I forgot to ring the bell. Oh, shoot. I forgot to ring the bell for the three that were framed. I accidentally deleted my so prize email. Um, I can resend it to you. So <clears throat> once we're done, I'll resend it to you. Um, yeah, I can look it up. What is this about? Pull out, pull out your thin artery. <laughs> <coughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's looking so good. Wow. Wow, that's a lot. That's looking really good. I think there was more on the other one because I think you've got like a bunch of this filled in now, don't you? Yeah, I think you do. I think so. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh my gosh. Time to switch projects. My stopping point. Orchids from Threadbare. That's beautiful. And then the Dutch windmill. Oh, I love it. Okay. <clears throat> so the hand embroidery cell, the small designs is up. So if you go into cells here, um, <clears throat> small designs. So this is anything and everything that would qualify for our, um, our, our gift exchange. So I got a bunch of, they're just a bunch of little things, a bunch of little patterns. Of course, this is the whole thing, but I'm talking, you know, each one individually, um, <coughs> I have got a tickle in the back of my throat. So all of these are on sale and there's tons of stuff. Um, you can just keep scrolling and there's tons of stuff. There's pin cushions and biscuit news and um, scissor phobes and cute little ornaments. <coughs> I'm going to get the hiccups again. Just all kinds of fun things. So and go, it goes on and on and on and on. There's bell pulls in here. And it's not just, um, it's everything. It's not just holidays. So all the holidays are in here. So anything and everything is in here. Okay. Then... <coughs> I have the world's weirdest hiccups. Um, I have the holiday gift exchange is here. So you can go here. Oh, I have to log in first.
Um, okay, so it's under challenges. I'll be sending out an email too, but you'll go here and then click on the button participate. Then when you are finished with your item, not until you're finished with your item, then you will come here <coughs> and you will register that you're finished. You have until the 15th of November to mark that you have registered your, your project. And then the following week, I will, <coughs> I will email everybody with who they are, get, who they are sending to. So that is all there and ready for you to sign up for and all of it. I'll be posting the link in our group so you can go and do that. All the rules are in there. I think, yes, even here I've made a link to <coughs> all of the designs to the design cell. So the link to the design cells right in there as well. Um, you know, if you have any questions, you can always email me or DM me, whatever. Um, so yeah, so come in here, click participate. It'll change to participating. <coughs> oh. Once you're done stitching it, come back and click registered. Oh, you found it. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. And then you'll be able to send out your thing when you, when you, um, get it done. So I think that's going to be super exciting. I'll post a link to this on the page, but you saw how I got there. I just went into my blogs, went into challenges and stitch alongs, and then just look for the holiday, um, give along. But I mean, you can do it like this. You can, <coughs> oh my gosh, just go into my blog and just type in um, gift and then you don't have to look for it. It'll just come up. So you can do that too. And then you can just go right into it and sign up for it. Obviously you have to be logged into your account because that's what I did. So there, any questions about the holiday gift exchange or how to sign up or the sell or finishing or next week's topic? I have to go back and I'll find that post um, because there were some really good ideas in there um, of what to do um, <coughs> next week. So that'll be fun. No, 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 no. Okay. <coughs> oh my heck. The cough and the hiccups. I'll tell you what. Okay, I hope you all have an amazing, amazing night. I'm going to go eat dinner because I'm starving. And I hope you all keep stitching and have a fabulous week. And I will see you all next time. Happy stitching, everyone.